Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Soldier Talk, the podcast. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant McPherson. And on this show, we discuss military topics with current and prior service members. Uh, before we get started, I want you guys to hit that like button. Uh, make sure you guys support the podcast. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Okay, today, you guys, uh, we're going to be going over the implementation procedures for the CSDP inspection. So, first, you want to, it's the requirements listing. So, this is the checklist. It says, a co compilation of existing requirements is established as a requirement listing. The present supply-oriented supervisory responsibilities are listed according to level of responsibility. Each level of command will review the requirements listing for completeness and make the necessary adjustments. Make the necessary uh, additions to account for any uniqueness. Implementation. Each commander will provide the personal interest and direction necessary to establish and ensure the success of their CSDP. The CSDP will be incorporated into existing resources in the command to avoid redundancy of effort. Each command level above the unit level will appoint a CSDP coordinator to assist the commander with establishing the monitoring, the CSDP. So this is uh, the uh, CSDP, uh, when you appoint a CSDP monitor, this is the, a memorandum to where the CSDP monitor is appointed. Uh, Evaluations. The CSDP does not require vertical assessments of sub subordinate un subordinate organizations' activities. Each command level is required to evaluate the next lower level of operations, except the, for our CC battalions, which would be inspected per AR 17-2. Further evaluations of lower levels are as command directed. The frequency of evaluation is as follows. The frequency of internal evaluations as desired. So uh, if the commander says, okay, I want to do an inspection, she can do that, or she or he can do that uh, as desired when it comes to internal. Uh, the frequency of evaluations for a uh, lower level is supposed to be, the battalion is supposed to uh, conduct uh, CSGP inspections on uh, units quarterly. So the evaluation process is as follows. The purpose of the evaluation is to determine whether or not an organization is complying with regulatory guidance. The requirements listing established the minimum standards. Commands are encouraged to develop command checklists using the requirements listing as a baseline. Evaluators will record findings on each applicable Requirement listing entry. The results of the last evaluation will also be reviewed to determine if past discrepancies were resolved. So this is another thing. So once if you if you're doing a, a inspection on someone, you want to have that last inspection. That way you can uh compare what they have corrected and what's still being uh being uh what's still what they st still uh like messing up on basically. Uh so. Resolved and repeat findings will be noted. The organization's supervisor will be will be briefed on the evaluation findings at the completion of the evaluation. The supervisor during their out briefing will establish a suspense date for a resolution of each discrepancy. The supervisor change command is authorized to grant extensions to establish suspense to the established suspense date. The in the case of a discrepancy due to circumstances beyond the control of the evaluated organization, refer to paragraph 11 6C3I. In the case of repeat findings, the chain, chain of command will be notified of the problem upon completion of the evaluation in order to reestablish compliance. 
the evaluated organization and or activity will be provided copies of each evaluation made under the CSDP. The copies will specify any non-compliance findings along with prospective suspense dates determined by the supervisor. The evaluator will be will also retain a copy of the evaluation and use it for a follow-up on corrective actions during the next periodic evaluation. If major problems or policy questions are surfaced during CSDP evaluation, the findings will be elevated up the chain of command to that level capable of resolving the problem. So documentation. At the user level, no additional record, record keeping using the CSDP is required. The normal recording of inventories and inspections are still required. The level conducting the external evaluation will provide the subordinate organization a copy of the evaluation results, establish a file of evaluations conducted, a minimum of two evaluations per organization will be maintained. The minimum information required in the file of evaluation conducted is the date of the evaluation, organization evaluated findings and associated suspense dates and repeat findings. So it says it's interest service support agreements in order to make the CSDP a responsive and responsive and efficient program. Maximum use of interest service support agreements is encouraged. Numerous tenants units are located at many installations. Chain of command evaluation of these subordinate units in accordance with CSDP frequency requirements may create extensive travel and man hour support. Therefore, ACOMs, ACCCs, and or Jews are encouraged to enter into interest service support agreements to authorize installation commanders to conduct, to conduct evaluations of applicable tenant units. Evaluation results would then be forwarded to the respective ACOM, ASCC, and or Drew headquarters. So those are for tenant units, which fall on the ten for tenant units. Okay, so I just explained basically the implementation for the uh implementation procedures for the CSDP. Uh let me know down in the comments if you got guys uh got any questions about that. Uh so the biggest thing what I see is like when you go and do an inspection, you want to uh make sure you have a copy of the prior inspection. So if any repeat findings, you want to note that on the repeat findings and you want to give them a suspense date on when they need to have that corrected. And it's up to their supervisor or to grant extensions according to that suspense date. Okay, so it says something else in here. So it says if major problems or policy questions are surfaced during a CSDP inspection, these findings will be elevated up the chain of command to that level capable of resolving the problem. So more than likely, you can uh, is resolve the problem right there at the source. It won't have to go up the chain of command because we know how to do our jobs. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. So I got another thing. So uh, at the user level, no additional record keeping unique to the USDP. So the CSDP is required. So it said, I was trying to find something else it said in here. So it said the evaluated organization and our activity will be provided copies of each evaluation made under CSDP. The copies will be specified, will specify any non-compliance filing along with the respective suspense date determined by the supervisor. So that's the person conducting their uh inspection so whoever the evaluator the evaluator will also retain a copy okay so it said the supervisor so okay so whoever the xo is uh that's the person who's going to determine the suspense date on when they are going to have those discrepancies fixed uh and then you'll come back and get reevaluated, or they can get extensions on however when they're going to do a reinspection. Okay, uh, let me go. Uh, make sure you guys like the video. Uh, this has been another episode of Soldiers Talk the Podcast, and I'll see you guys in formation.